Shalom. All praises to Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai Bash and Raka Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. And um, you know, what I wanted to do is to touch on a little bit on Isaiah the 19th chapter. And uh, Apostle Taha had done a breakdown on this um, particular chapter, I believe about a couple of weeks ago. Or a week ago, um, and a pretty, uh, pretty informative uh, video as well, man. If I may say so myself, because um, I myself, um, when I've broken the scripture down, it's particularly in the fourth, um, fourth verse. You know, I've, uh, you know, I've mentioned that that's talking about, you know, the uh, king of Babylon, which the current king of Babylon is. Biden, um, yeah, it went from Trump to Biden, um, however, ultimately, that cruel Lord is speaking about our Lord, Yahweh Shai, okay, uh, and we're going to prove it through the scriptures, all right, and I'm going to, I pray this is edifying, this is um, Isaiah chapter 19, verse 1, it says, the burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, Right up upon a swift cloud. And that's exactly how the Lord is coming back, man. He's coming back on a swift cloud. All right. He's coming back on a swift cloud. That's why the scripture says in Revelation, uh, the first chapter, the seventh verse, behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. So the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is coming back with clouds, man. All right. And every eye shall see the Lord when he comes back and that's why the scriptures speak about men's hearts shall fail them for fair people you best believe they will go into shock they will be perplexed you know they're going to have heart attacks strokes all kind of stuff is going to be happening you're dealing with the king of terrors and when the heavenly father is ready to open up something nasty out here and that's another thing that people don't seem to understand that the Lord deals with both sides he deals with you know the darkness and the light good the evil it all comes from the Lord. That's why when you read in Amos the third chapter and the sixth verse, it says, shall a trumpet be blown in the city? Now, who is responsible for blowing the trumpet? Right? Amongst our people, Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, a people before us, a place. Right? And even among the other nations, they're hearing this as well. They're hearing about their future, them going into slavery, you know? Hearing about the future judgments, how America, America, which is Babylon the Great, all right, which again is spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt, like it tells you in Revelation 11 and 8, which we're going to get that in a second, but we're blowing the trumpet, all right, and should the people not be afraid? Shall there be an evil in a city and the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, have not done it? So, listen, man, like, the Heavenly Father is going to... You know, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna shake the earth. The scriptures tell you that in Isaiah the twenty fourth chapter. And when that evil comes down and descends upon America and various different parts of the world, when mainly Babylon the Great, which is America, when the missiles hit America, the earth will shake. Alright? So now is not the time of mirth, as the scripture says in Ezekiel twenty one, you know, and um nine on down, you know, that the sword is being sharpened. It is sharpened to give it into the hand of the slayer, you know, to make a sore slaughter, loosely paraphrasing. And it goes on to say, should we then make mirth? So this is the trumpet being blown. All right. Let's go back to Revelation 1 and 7. It says, behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, Aman, right? So. All the kindreds of the earth are going to well because when Yahweh Shai comes back, it's going to be a day of darkness and not light. Like the scriptures tell us in Amos 5 and 18. It says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Okay, so the day of the Lord is going to be a day of darkness, man. A day of gloominess. A day of thick darkness. You know, like the scriptures say, so... You know, Yahweh Shai ain't coming back to hand out no daffodils, man. Okay, and that's why, let's go back to Isaiah 19 now. Right? It says, 
the burden of Egypt, behold, right? And why does it say the burden of Egypt? All right, because the scriptures tell us, like I said, I was going to get this scripture in Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, right? Which is America. All right. That great city is talking about America, man. Okay. The so-called shining beacon of the earth, you know, where all the nations look in or they used to look in awe of and wanted to go to America to make it, to be somebody, you know? As the saying once went, you know, the streets paved with gold. But really and truly, man, you know, America is a, is nothing but a shithole. All right. And it's also known as Babylon, which the word Babylon goes back to the Hebrew word Babal, which means confusion. It's a city of confusion over there in America. You know, it says which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now, let's go back to the early part of the verse. Why did it say that dead bodies should just tell you that, you know, it's talking about. Israelite, Israelites in a dead state of mind, you know, because the scriptures tell us clearly that the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. And that's why it says their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is over there in America. And you can see that the wicked of our people are in a dead state of mind. The scripture says the whole head is sick in Isaiah, the first chapter, man. Okay. And it goes on to say, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt and another thing the dead bodies that the scriptures is liken unto um you know having a true understanding of the scriptures gives us life okay because the scriptures tell us in John 6 and 63 right it says it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit if nothing the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life and the word quickeneth means to make alive. Okay? So when you have the understanding and you've been quickened through the spirit, and you have this understanding, man, this wisdom and knowledge, you know, then guess what? You have you're laying a hold of eternal life. Okay. And that's why it is written to um, let's get first Timothy chapter six and twelve, as it says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Right, we're laying a hold on eternal life by you know taking heed according to these scriptures through the spirit, okay? Because everything outside of the understanding of this word, right, represents death, which is the ways of the flesh. The flesh profit if what nothing, he just said that in John 6 and 63. So, as we fight the good fight of faith, you know, and as we stand true to who we are and our, our stance in this against this world, should I say, not in this world, but against this world. Even though we use the word as not abusing it, we're laying a hold on eternal life because, you know, we're trying to do the best we can according to the scriptures, which the ways of the scriptures, the words leadeth unto life. All right. And that's how we laid on a hold on eternal life. Did not Yahweh Shai say, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Okay. It says, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses, man. All right. So um, we have to profess a good profession, man. Like the scripture says, occupy till I come. So we have a job to do. All right. So these words represent life, man. And let's, let's go back to Revelation 11 and 8. And a dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now, you know, America, the great city, Babylon the Great, the city of confusion, spiritually called Sodom. All right. They uh, legalize pretty much, you know, uh, uh, flamers. That they can get married in all states. You can, you can, you can, you can pretty much do what you want in that. You know, the, do as that wilt vibration over there in America. You can pretty much, you know, you can be involved in bestiality. You can change your your gender. You know, or you know, or you can say that you have changed your gender because hey, the scripture says male and female. You know, created he them. You know, the gender is, is a thing that's already been set by the Heavenly Father, man. But, you know, Esau, you know, the, this is the kingdom of the wicked that you're dealing with. And Esau cast the words of the Most High behind him. He pushes out the vibration of death. And that's why the scripture says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. This is, this, that may, America is spiritually called Sodom, man. And Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. All right, now, our Lord was not crucified in Egypt, per se, 
okay, when you go into the word crucified, it comes from a dative of the Latin word uh, crux, which means to cross. All right, meaning what? They crossed out the image of our Lord. See, they put the so-called white man with blonde hair and blue eyes up and told you that that's your savior. All right, that's, the, you know, and they called him Jesus Christ, which the letter J didn't come come about until, that's a Renaissance word, letter, you know? And it didn't come about until the 1500s, man. All right? So his name could not have been Jesus Christ, man. His name is Yahweh Shai, bro. All right? And, he, and he's of the tribe of Judah. The scriptures tell you that it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah or Yahweh. All right? So his name couldn't have been uh, uh, Jesus. All right? In fact, when the Lord was on the screen, uh, on the scene, you know, um, you know, he had a Hebrew name. All right? And his name is Yahweh Shai. All right, why did he, you know, speak to Paul in a Hebrew tongue? The scriptures tell us that in Acts, the 26th chapter, I believe it is, you know? So, um, and why does it say spiritually called Sodom and Egypt now? Why do they have the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill? All right, you got certain, certain states over there in America that are named after certain places in Egypt, like Memphis, all right? And why do they have the pyramid again? Why do they have the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill with the all-seeing eye, you know, the the, the glowing eye, um, the capstone, and they have no of us order, seclorium, you know, new world order, you know, and they have a new it coeptus, you know, uh, endeavors or enterprises crowned with success, you know. So they have a new world order that they're trying to fulfill, man. You best believe that these elites are pushing. And that's why they're decreeing these unrighteous decrees, man. They're getting more draconian, which the word draconian means excessively harsh or severe. This is what they're doing, man. All right, so let's go back to Isaiah 19. And ultimately, they're going to push the, the karagma and make that mandatory. <clears throat> All right, so this is how the Lord is going to come and he's going to ride upon that swift cloud, man. Right? <clears throat> the same way that he went, you know, the Lord went in uh, Acts, the first chapter, he went up in a cloud, right? Didn't the scripture say that, right? It says the burden, back in Isaiah 19 and 1, the burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. And we only just, we ain't even got to verse 2, 3, 4. We still in verse 1, man. You see how these scriptures come together. So the Lord is going to come upon that swift cloud in the same way that he went in Acts, the first chapter. This is Acts 1 and 9. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, who's the day? The disciples, right? They were watching Yahweh Shai, right? And after he'd spoken these things, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now that cloud is talking about what the so-called white man calls UFOs or UAPs, all right? He was beamed up, if you will, out of the, the sight of the disciples, all right? And they beheld him, they watched him. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, okay, which are the two angels, right, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which Yahweh Shai is a nomen omen, and we have to know the names of the Heavenly Father and the Son, man. The scriptures tell you that there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. So we have to know the names of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, all right, which Yahweh means he to be or he exists. Yahweh Shai means he, the deliverer. And he's coming back to deliver us out of captivity from the hand of our enemies, man. And that's another thing. If the Lord is coming back to deliver, you know, the elect of the nation of Israel, a particular group of people, he's going to deliver them from the hands of other people, which are our enemies. So the Lord can't be dealing with all nations if he's coming back to save us from the other nations, okay, this is exclusive deliverance, man, only for the elect of the nation of Israel to be delivered and saved, all right, and the scripture says in Matthew 24, um, let's quickly get that, <clears throat> Matthew 24 and 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. So there's going to be a great mourning and a great lamenting when the Lord comes back with them, them chariots and the armies from heaven, right? And they shall see the Son of Man. Because the scripture says, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, man. All right? 
it says, they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven. There goes the clouds again. Right? And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. Okay? He said he's going to come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So the heavenly father is going to send his son back, Yahweh Shai, for two things. To destroy Esau's rulership, destroy Esau and the other nations. Right? And he's also going to beam up and gather his elect. All right? That's two things. Good and bad news. And that's the balance. Because the scripture says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Okay? Like the scripture says, the slain of the Lord shall be many, right? So the Lord is coming back to slay and he's coming back to, to save, right? But there's many more that are going to be slain that are going to be saved because the salvation is only for the elect. It says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And he's going to come back in them ships, man. All right, he's going to be in that father's ship. Leading the charge, as birds of heaven shall the heavenly Father defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Loosely paraphrasing, Yahweh Shai is going to be leading the charge. Like when you see them birds, there's there's always that one bird in the in the front leading the charge, man. You know, like when you see uh, ducks flying together in the sky and they fly in that V formation, Yahweh Shai is going to be at the helm of that. You know, at that, that I believe it's the helm, this is the front, if I'm not mistaken. You know, but he's going to be at the front leading the charge, man. And the armies following him upon white horses going into Revelation, the 19th chapter. They're going to follow him upon white horses, man. But the point remains, Yahweh Shai is coming back to, to for two things, destruction and salvation. Okay. So let's go back to what the angel said to the disciples in Acts 1 and 11. And they said to them, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the same way that he went is the same way that he's coming back. And that's why when we read in Isaiah 19, right? And it speaks about, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, right? He shall come into Egypt, which is America. Okay, we just read that, uh, Revelation 11 and 8. Spiritually, Sodom and Egypt, right? And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. <clears throat> and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Okay. And that reminds me of that scripture in uh, Second Peter's the third chapter and the 10th verse. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the element shall melt with fervent heat. Okay, the elements are going to melt with fervent heat, man. All right, that's exactly what's going to happen. The elements are going to melt with fervent heat. The Lord is coming back with fire. And not only that, you're going to have the nuclear missiles, man. And that's going to make the earth reel to and fro like a drunkard. Like the scripture says in Isaiah 24. It says, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. When you go from there, you can go to Isaiah 9 and 5, speaking about... Oh... For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. This is how Esau's kingdom is going out. With burning and fuel of fire. Okay. So all this talk about burning and elements melting with fervent heat. The second death, man. Okay. This is how the Lord is going to take out Esau's kingdom. Alright. So let's go back to Isaiah 19. Right. It says... The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. All right. The earth is going to shake the earth. Like there's a scripture that says once more will the Lord shake, rise again to shake. Let me see if I can get that scripture. Um, beautiful. This is Haggai chapter two, verse six. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, which means the Lord of armies, man. You know, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill his house with the and I will fill this house with his gl with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay. So there's gonna be a great shaking, okay, on the earth. And you can imagine the destruction, you can imagine the tsunamis, man, you know. You know, the buildings toppling, 
you know, buildings getting wiped out, people getting trapped under buildings. And that's why the scripture says the day of the Lord is darkness, man, because it's going to be a day like no other since there was a nation. Verse 2 in Isaiah 19, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Okay, and the modern day Egyptians are who? Esau, Edom. Okay, and that's why you're seeing their kingdom that's being divided. You know, you got the Russians coming up against America, you know. You got the uh the split over there in America, the Russians and the um so, so like the uh, Republicans and the Democrats, right? And um that's that division. And the Lord said He came not to, you know, uh, uh came to bring division. Okay, in fact, I believe that's in Luke. What is it? The twelfth chapter. I tell you, nay. Um, where is it? Yep. This is Luke 12 and 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. And that's exactly what you're seeing that's happening over there. Right? Especially over there in America. There's nothing but division. You've got these mandates being pushed out of the, the serpent serum. You've got some people that are take, you know, taking it. Some people that ain't taking it. Nurses and doctors coming out and speaking out against the serum. Getting fired. Losing their jobs. Protests. Okay? This is the Egyptians set against the Egyptians. But ultimately, that's... You know, Esau's kingdom, that's be, being divided. That's what that's talking about. And they shall, back in Isaiah 19 and 2, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. All right? And you even see in the Chinese come up and buck up against America. You've got the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South, South America. Or South Africa, Salakia, South Africa, I believe it is. You know, so they're coming up against um coming up against America as well. Alright. So we definitely we're definitely in the times of the end. Okay, it says, and the spirit, because remember the scripture says that every house that's divided shall not be able to stand. So with this Egyptians coming up against the Egyptians, that shows you that Esau's kingdom is just a matter of time before it topples over, man. Because remember, the Lord said he established his point and his bounds that he cannot pass. See, Esau's inward thought is that his house shall continue forever, but that's not so. Because the prophecy has been written, and the Lord said his word was not going to return unto him void, but it shall, it shall establish that which he pleases and prosper. Right? So verse 3, it says, And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols. And to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. Yeah, because Esau deals in witchcraft. Okay, and that's how he keeps the masses dumbed down through his witchcraft, through his media as well. All right, and through his blood sacrifice rituals that he does behind the scenes, the secret counsel of the wicked. Okay, um, this, 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 yeah, the serpent serum, that's nothing but witchcraft. All trying to alter your DNA and so on and so forth. That's witchcraft. All right. And the scripture says that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And Esau is in open rebellion. Here he is, it takes the word upon himself. He swears himself, his presidents in on a Bible, but he has nothing to do with what the Bible says. That's just, uh, Psalm 15, 16. All right. The Most High said that he cast, the wicked cast the words of the Most High behind him. All right. And this is the point. Verse 4 it says, And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord. Now, I've heard this broken down before. It's talking about Biden. But ultimately, because ultimately what Biden is doing is cruel. All right. And these mandates and forcing, you know, especially Jake to be pretty much take the stabbing jab. But ultimately, it's talking about Yahweh Shai. That's the cruel Lord. OK, that's the ultimate breakdown of that scripture right there. OK. It says, and a fierce king shall rule over them, say of the Lord. Right, the Lord of hosts. Remember the Lord of the armies. And who is that? That's talking about what? When Yahweh Shai comes back, leading the charge, man. And to prove that that's the ultimate breakdown of that scripture, all right, is Isaiah 13 and 9. And when I heard this breakdown, this precept linked to this Isaiah 19, I was blown away because it was just, it's, it just hit the mark. Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold, the day of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai cometh, both cruel. And with wrath and fierce anger. Okay. So that's the cruel Lord. Alright. That Yahweh Shai, the day of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai cometh, man. Both cruel with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners.
thereof out of it. All right, and that's why the scripture says the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. He's going to destroy the sinners thereof out of it. That's why the scripture says the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. All right, and that's why we're saying, look, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. All right, now's the time to repent. Because the day of the Lord cometh and it's coming cruel, man. With wrath and fierce anger. In fact, let's get... um. That's not the one I wanted, but that's a good one. I can read it anyway. This is Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. That's the two thirds, you know, the wicked of our people, right? They're going to be put to death. But the third shall be left therein. And that's the elect over there in the uh, land of America. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will re refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call upon my name. So we have to know the name. Okay. No salvation. Whereby we must be saved. Unless we know the name. You know. Acts 4 and 12. No other name given among men. Whereby we must be saved. That's how it goes. Right. It says. And I will hear them. And I will say it is my people. All right. It is my people. And they shall say the Lord. Yahweh is my power. So how can I be dealing with the other nations? All right. It just scripture just said it is my people. And who is the Lord's people? The Israelites, bro. All right. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord. Yahweh thy power. The Lord. Yahweh thy power have chosen thee to be a special people. Unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth, man. This ain't talking about the other nations. This is talking about the nation of Israel. Okay. And it said that they should call upon my name, right? In verse 9 in Zechariah 13. And how can the other nations call upon the name when the scripture says this? Right? Malachi 1 verse 14. But cursed be the deceiver who have in his flock a male and voweth and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. So the name of the Lord is dreadful among the heathen. So how are they going to call upon the name of the Lord? And the Lord's going to hear them. And he's going to say that they're, they're his people. Come on, man. All right. You dealing with that replacement theology, you know, supersessionism crap. All right, which we ain't dealing with that. You ain't trying to add or take away from the words of the scriptures, man. The Lord ain't changed, right? The scriptures tell you at Malachi 3 and 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. In fact, let's get that, okay? For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Your Iqua, okay? Which Jacob's name was changed to who? Israel. So the sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Lord said, I will say that you are, thou are my people. This is my people. All right, now that's the one I wanted to get. Zephaniah 3 and 8. For therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, Yahweh Shai, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, which that means righteous anger, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire. Of my jealousy. And that's how the Lord is coming back with fire man. And I went there. Alright. Because it says what? Fear, all my fierce anger. Going back to what? Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold the day of the Lord cometh both cruel with wrath and fierce anger. To lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So you know that's a perfect precept to go to. To prove that Isaiah 19 and 4. Is actually talking about Yahweh Shai when he comes back. You know, the cruel Lord, man. Ultimately, you know. So, uh, hey. And I pray this is edifying, you know. Double honest to the uh, apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth, man. And uh, shalom to the elect.